us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that we can be here in your house this morning, having lifted our voices unto you. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will be with us this morning, that each and every person that is here this morning will hear from you in a very personal, a very intimate way, Lord Jesus. And we will not just be hearers of your word, but we'll be doers of your word. So, Lord, help our hearing this morning. Be with each person. Comfort our hearts, Lord Jesus. Lord, you know the individual challenges that each of us may be going through as we look at the week ahead. We ask as we place these at your feet, Lord, you will take care of it. Our closing song just now says, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And that is so true. Lord, each and every day you continue to meet our individual needs. Lord, we pray that our desire is going to be to grow stronger and to grow closer with you, Lord, to serve you to the best of our ability. So, Lord, minister unto each person on their listening ear this morning and those who may be watching by YouTube or by Facebook. Be with us, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Father, this morning, as a church, we bring before you our deacon, deacon Mortis, as he travels. We ask, Lord, that traveling mercies go before him, that, Lord, he will not have any hiccups in his travel, that you will watch over him, be with him, Lord, help him, that he does not get sick as he goes into that uh, heavy cold that he's going to, and that he'll be back safely with his family before the week is end. Be with him, Lord Jesus. Watch over him. We pray for those who are sick otherwise, Lord, we want to lift up Brandon before you. We ask may you be with him. We want to lift up Sister Debbie, who is not well. We want to lift up Sister Diana Lee, Lord Jesus, before you, Sister Sandra. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters. We may not, I may not know the name, but those of you who know of an individual who is sick right now, I agree with you as we lift them up in prayer that God's healing hand will rest upon them and that they will receive full and complete healing. Lord, we pray for my wife and her family as they mourn the loss of their grandmother. Lord, we ask that you just give them the strength that they need. May your spirit minister unto them and speak to them in that very intimate and that very personal way, Lord. Comfort their hearts at this time. Lord, we pray for our young children. And we ask that you continue to watch over them, guide them, protect them. We pray for young adults, Lord, that they will become energized, become zealous for you, Lord Jesus. Be willing to uh, reach out in the community to share your word where possible, Lord. We pray that every child, every young person, every young adult that is affiliated with Port Lola Baptist Church will come to know you as their personal Lord and indwelling Savior. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done and for what you're going to do. As we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. We read from the first Bible, uh, from the first book of the Bible, found in Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, and we want to read from verses 8 to verse 10. So Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 10, and you can follow on the wall as we read this morning. Hey, thank you, Kenny. I think we, we may have it there. Thanks a lot. He said, and they heard the song of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the song of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. This is the word from the Lord this morning. You all can be seated. I want to share this morning on a very interesting topic. All right? And uh, as I do that, I, I want you all to follow with me. And it is my hope that you all will really receive uh, God's word this morning. Uh, Brother Edward, I want to say thank you uh, from the pulpit for your support this morning. Uh, for being uh, that musician. Church, we are in need of a musician. If you know a good Christian, well, let me take that back because it can't be good Christian. A Christian musician. <laughs> a Christian musician <laughs> that has, uh, that is available that we can speak with and even more so that can assist us. Uh, please uh, let me know. And so we can move on. We're also in the process of uh, working out an arrangement with uh, someone that uh, we that Deacon Jones have met, who are also who is going to be willing to train persons 
in, in, in using the drum, the organ, and so forth. So if you can't play an instrument right now, but would like to play one, speak with Deacon Jones before uh, you leave, and then um, let's see how we can. As we grow church, there are changes, and sometimes uh, we just got to move along with, the, uh, with things and just continue for, for the Lord, all right? As I prepared this morning, I read a illustration. I think some of you may know it or may not. But it says a woman took her husband to the doctor. And he was very sick, Deacon. And uh, her husband was suffering from a major sickness. And so they went to the doctor, and the doctor saw them. But the husband was hard of hearing and couldn't hear well. All right? And the doctor was speaking to both him and his wife. And he told them indeed that he was sick. And so the husband said, Honey, what did he say? His wife looked at her and said, He said you are sick. All right? And then the, the, the husband said, Listen, I want to encourage you to reduce your husband's stress level. All right? He says this every morning, vegan, give him his favorite breakfast. Make the best lunch and the best dinner you can for him. And he says, listen, never argue with him. Always keep him in, in, in good spirit. And he said, if you can, dress as best as you can also for him. And the husband said, honey, what did the doctor say? And the wife looked at the husband and he said, he says you are going to die. I hope you all get that there. Church, this morning, as we look at God's word, and as we heard from, uh, we listened to the reading, listen, Adam and Eve, in the beginning, heard the song of God. They heard the song of God walking in the garden. All right? So man was originally created deacon in order to hear God's voice and God's songs in their life. All right? The word song, it also means shama, equals to God hears. Was that undivided attention that brought direction, purpose, fellowship, and instruction? But church, even after the fall of man, we are still created to operate best when we hear from God. I want to say with that, uh, I want to entitle this message, if it's not here, there is it. Heart of hearing. And one person said, Pastor, let me say, nah, let, me, let, let me leave that one person alone for right now. All right? Because, because it would be unfair to that one person because most people don't know who that one person is. But let me just say this. They came back to me and said, are you sure that is the correct name you have there for that message? <laughs> and I said, yes, that's exactly what I want to say. Out of hearing. All right, and we want to look firstly at some different ways in which God speaks to each and every one of us. Because just as we communicate today, we communicate in many different ways. Right? We communicate in letters. We communicate in email. We communicate in text. We communicate by phone. We communicate by social media. There are so many different ways in which we communicate with each other. And also, there are so many different ways in which God can speak to us. But sometimes people believe that there has to be a specific way or a specific formula. No, God speaks to us in many ways. And I want us right now for a brief moment to look at some of the ways I believe God speaks to us this morning. And the first one I want to say is that God speaks to us through his word. Amen? The word of God tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, it says this, Not some, but all scriptures are read out by God. And it's profitable for what? For teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So God speaks to us through his word. And that's why, church, it is important that as a child of God, that we read his word. As often as we can. Secondly, God speaks to us through creation. The word of God declares unto us in the book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 20. It says, for his invisible attribute, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. In the things that have been made, 
so they are without excuse. God speak to us through creation. And church, God speak to us thoroughly through a gentle persuasion. God speak to us softly and, and talk to us and let us see what he's saying. Listen with me as we read a scripture from our first Kings chapter 19. I want to read verses 11 through verse 13, but I just want to read uh, verse 13, talking about Elijah. It says, and when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, cloak and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Listen, he says this, and behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here? God whispers to him, speak to him. Church, there is something special in terms, and I'm going to say this again probably, but when someone whispers to you, what normally happens? You normally have to like lean in to hear good, especially if you're like me. Isn't that so? I don't think you all got that, but that is fine. God speak to us, church. He speak to us, spirit. He speak to our inner man. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, here's what the word of God said. It says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Amen? God speaks to our spirit and it bears witness to our spirit. In church, God speaks to us when we are seeking him. You know, in worship time really creates that ambience. Church, I want to tell you, you want to go before the Lord. You know, many times when, when you pray with me, you'll find out this. I always sing during my prayer. I always, I can't, uh, whenever I am having my personal prayer time, I could never have that without singing, without worshiping. It just flows naturally, lifting our voice to the Lord. The prophet Jeremiah tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 and 13, listen to what it says. Then you call upon me, and I come and pray to you, and I will hear you. Well, listen to what verse 13 says. You will seek me, and when you seek me, you'll find me. When you seek me, how do? With all your heart. Church, when we go before the Lord and seek him with all our heart, we, he's going to hear us and he is going to be responsive. Church, I believe that God anticipates that he will hear from us. He desires to hear from us when we seek him. Amen? We ought to become aware. Church, one of the things, as you think about seek, I want you to think about it, is that we seek him, but the scripture gives us such great confidence, such great assurance in the knowledge of God taken from the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. While we think we are seeking him, listen, it says, but God already showed his love towards us when in that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. So sometimes saying we are seeking, he already done his part a long time ago. God speaks to us also through prophecy. All right? Prophetically, he speaks to us. Look with me at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 5, verses 19 through verse 21. It says this, Do not quench your spirit. Do not despise prophecies. But test everything. Hold fast what is good. The Bible itself, church, is prophetic. It's breathed out word of God. But the Holy Spirit work in people and he will prophesy. God will prophesy to people and speak to us. Church, it was done in the Old Testament quite a bit and it is still done today. God speak to us through prophecy. But again, with prophecy, you need to be careful and there need to be guidance. All right? As you think about it, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14 says, where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. Church, God speaks to us through individuals. But it got to be godly individuals. Right? Not just anyone. And so it troubles me sometimes when people, when people say a certain celebrity says something and they take that as some kind of guidance and those celebrity they are nowhere close to the lord it worries me but unfortunately many celebrities uh, uh, that are on tv they are the ones who many people follow after and that is not godly counsel that is not wisdom church god speak to us through circumstances and through events 
We all can know that. This is a classical example. Let, let me share with you all, church, from the book of Acts, where we see where circumstances and events bring children of God together and form a massive relationship and a good relationship. In the book of Acts, chapter 18, verses uh, 1 through 3, it says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. Listen carefully. When he went to Corinth, he says, And he found a certain Jew, Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who was recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Why? Because Claudius had commanded that all the Jews to depart from Rome, and they came to them. Listen. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked. For by occupation, they were tent makers. Church, Paul, uh, Claudius chased the Jews out of, it, out of, uh, out of uh, from Rome. And so they had to leave. So they did not leave because they wanted to, but they also provided an opportunity for Paul to meet with them. Not just as children of God, but also, but he met with them because of their occupation. Church, sometimes God will put you in circumstances and place that you'll meet individuals because of the circumstances, whether it be your occupation, uh, whether it be sometimes it could be a hobby that you have. Many times we meet individuals on the sports field or enjoying some kind of fun activities. These are circumstances come. And in this circumstance, one of the most beautiful alliance and relationship in the word of God was formed in the new church. All right? But church, as we move together, I want to figure and if you are like me, I'm going to say it again. You will notice that you do not hear as good as you used to. Isn't that so? Now, nobody wants to say, Pastor, I don't hear as good. But there are certain things in life and indeed, and we've got to be careful. I'm going to show you to us, children of God. You know, if you are in a, you know, it's amazing. If you go and meet someone who lives by a bus station, and when you go there and you start talking with them, you say, how you live here? And they ask you, what do you mean? How you handle the nice every day? But what happened? With time, they get used to it. Right? And I want you to, 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 to watch with me. There are things that normalize us and take away what we should be hearing. All right? And I'm going to reach it too. That there are times that you come to church too much, it just becomes normal. They say, what did the pastor say? He preached a word. What else? I did not hear, brother. I did not hear. No, no, everybody's trying to say, can I remember what Pastor shared about last week? Mm. But another time, what we do is develop what is called selective hearing. Anybody know about that? Where we hear indeed what we want. God speak to us on a specific frequency, and we tune in and tune out as we feel like. You know, I was thinking about it. It is sometimes like, uh, I think everybody can experience your cell phone. Some places you go, it's just not going to happen, isn't it? And I tell you, I've learned this about people too, Deacon. They find out where their phone doesn't work, and once you call them and you don't get them, they are always right at that spot. I find that out, you know. <laughs> They're always right at that spot. But selective hearing, and here's the, the, we're coming into the core of my message, it creates hard of hearing. Mm. It creates hard of hearing. And there's some things that also creates hard of hearing. And I want to look at a few. I, I, I realize I have some time, so that's pretty good. All right? Fear is something that tends to make us hard of hearing. As believers, look with me in the Old Testament. Book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 18 through verse 21. This is a scripture where the Ten Commandments are given. But look what happened towards the end. It says, Now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the song of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled and they stood far off and said to Moses, you speak to us 
and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, lest we die. And Moses said this to the people. He says, do not fear. For God has come to test you that the fear of him might be before you that you may not sin. But listen to, to verse 21. And verse 21 says this. And the people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thickness, to the thick darkness where God was. Many times as believers, we are contented. Began, I was thinking about our, our, our message uh, Wednesday night. We are contented with staying afar off. We are, let me, you, know, you know, I always say, if there's a prize to give out in church, I will always put it under the front seat because I know I will be able to take it back. When we have, <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, well, yes, bro, but, you know, when, when people come, they want to stay, no, I'm not, fit. if you all are at this back seat, it's not intentional, and so on, you say, listen, I want to stay at the back because I want to stay far away that I could also move the quickest out. Pastor, I have no time to touch base with me. By the time he walk, and that's why I leave here many times before we are over, you know, so that I get those who try to run out. And just, so that you, just so that you all know, that is one of the main reasons that I would leave. And I, and I call the deacons to come and close because I could be at that door because many people want to slide out before. Hey, deacon. Yes, I want to welcome them. Church, but here is a statement that is so true. It says, the voice of God is not always comfort, it's not always a comfortable voice. Because we will not remain the same whenever we listen. I want you all to get that, church. When God speaks to you and you truly listen, you cannot be the same again. It doesn't happen. And so that's why sometimes people want to be selective. Because when God speaks to us and we listen, amazing things happen. And so there's a tendency, there's a fear to stay or to walk back from God and you want to stand afar off. Church, as the church is moving and you hear the different things that are happening, don't stay in the background. Don't stand. I say, here is what we say and we normally say and it's been a while. See where God is working and join in. But see where God is at work and join in. Second cause of, hear, of hard of hearing is anger. Hmm. Anger makes us hard of hearing. In the letter of James, chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. What is it saying here, church? In the Old Testament, in the Bible, the word righteousness means being in right relationship. So if I'm angry, if I'm upset, I will not be producing a right relationship. Is not so. How many times when you're angry, how good a listener are you? When we're angry, we're truly hard of hearing or maybe we have no hearing. Is not so. Have you ever spoken with someone who is angry? And when you spoke to them, they say, okay, I understand. <laughs> Anger takes the best of you and, and, and destroy your relationship with the Lord. Not just your relationship with the Lord, but also with those around you. Many times it is moments of anger, we sprout words that we can never take back. And those words remain, haunt that relationship for the life of both or all persons involved. Because no matter what, something you, you bury it, but even so often. So we get angry. I don't want to hear nothing where you have to say. That sounds like a great Christian, doesn't it? But church, that is hard of hearing and it affects our relationship with the Lord. A third cause of hearing, how the hearing is this. We're busy. Mm. I'm busy, Lord. I do not have time. Church, you cannot learn from God if you do not cultivate a time, a place, and a discipline to hear from him. You, if you are too busy, now church, I'm also speaking to myself, but you got to take the time. If you are too busy 
You're not going to hear. It's not so. How many of you in your work environment, for example, you are so busy, people come talking to you. How good do you hear them? You know, you will hear different words. Sometimes we, you, your ears literally filter out some words because they could come and talk to you, but if it's PD and they said, today we'll get paid, you'll hear that. But if they tell you about something that you are to do, and then when you ask them, what happened? Well, I was busy. It happens in the Christian realm that we become so busy that we do not hear from God and we become hard of hearing. That's not none of us. I cannot get out here this morning. Let me tell you, I know, in fact, let me, I don't know how it works truthfully because my wife and I, they always tell me you need to go get your ear checked. But it works in my, in, in some cases, effectively too, you know. You know, you know, as they're saying that, there is this one man, he, can, he, he, he developed a hearing problem. And he was with his family, and every time they, he can't hear, and they keep having to be repeating things. So he said, I'm going to go to the doctor. So he went to the doctor. doctor gave him some, some uh, treatment, and he did some procedures on him. And doctor said, well, come back and see me in a month's time. And so he, he uh, went home. He went back to the doctor after a month, and doctor said, how, how, is there, how, do, how do your family feel that now you can hear? He says, listen, doctor, I've changed my will five times since then. I haven't told none of them I can hear better now. <laughs> Church, that is not my message for today. A fourth cause of hearing, hard of hearing is disobedience. Hmm. I got this quote and I really want to, I, I have two quotes I want to share, but I want this one. This one is from a pastor by the name of Mark Barterson. And here's what he said, because this is, I think is really, really wonderful. He said this, if you aren't willing to listen to everything God has to say, you eventually won't hear anything he has to say. If you want to hear his comforting voice, you have to listen to his convincing voice. Church are really tough. You know, and sometimes, indeed, think about it. Ch young, young teenagers who are here, listen, you don't want to hear everything your parents have to say, isn't that so? And if you don't want to hear everything that they have to say, eventually you are not going to hear anything that they say. I choose them because I think sometimes we can identify as parents because we will look at them and say, you are not listening. It's the same way God in heaven look upon us. You know, pastor says such a thing, you know, listen to him today. But if you continue doing that, eventually you will not listen to nothing. You will not listen to nothing if you don't listen to everything all the time. <laughs> Am I helping someone there? <laughs> all right. But here's another quote that I want to share. I'm not sure if I have this one up there. All right, but this comes from uh, Dr. Mark E. Moore, a theologian, and he says this. He says, preaching is incredibly dangerous. Listen. Because who listen but don't obey become deaf. <laughs> preaching is extremely dangerous because those who listen but do not obey become deaf. And then he refers to it like this. He says this. How? He says, we all know people who sleep through an alarm clock or who live beside a landing strip but never hear the plane. Hearing without heeding leads to deafness. Hearing without heeding left leads to deafness. Now I want you all to really figure out how good your hearing is before you leave here this morning. All right? And figure whether or not are you hearing as the word of God speak, are you hearing? You see, when we hear God's word, we should move in a specific direction. And when you see a Christian hearing God's word and going contrary to the, the God's direction, he is deaf. I want you to look out for some deaf Christians this week, but make sure you are not one of them, all right? Because if you're hearing God's word, God's word will lead you in a specific direction. So if you leave out this church, this, this building, and you go in the wrong direction, go to the doctor. Something is wrong with your hearing. I'm convinced. 
Eric Digan, go to Jesus and lead. You see, church, we, we want things from the Lord. But we do not realize that indeed we are having a hearing problem. All right? We want experiences. We want God to bless our relationship. But we don't want to hear about the lack of forgiveness or bitterness that may be hindering that relationship. You see, many times we are asking for things, but we are not realizing that there are things God is saying, let go of. And when you let go, it will come. But instead we think, God, you're just not hearing us. You see, we want God to bless our plans, but we don't take the time to listen to him before we make our plans. Huh? It's not so. We make the plans and then say, Lord, bless this plan. But do you go to him before? And when you go to him before and talk to him, then you can have the assurance and the confidence that he is going to bless your plans. Deacon Jones, listen to this one, brother. We want God to bless our money. But we do not want to hear and obey what he says about our money. He says, give. <laughs> and you say, how much? Then you say, do I have to? <laughs> and then we go through, listen, but Lord, bless me. Bless me. You know, I really have learned. And that illustration is so good. The brother come, you know, the brother come to the pastor and say, pastor, pray for my business. And I will give 10% every time. And the pastor said, I will do that. I'm going to commit. And then the brother start receiving so much blessing that now he's actually to give his 10%. He's giving thousands of dollars and he said, Pastor, we got to work out something here. I'm giving too much. Pastor says, no. Let's just pray for the Lord to bless you less. That's fine. You don't want to give so much. Just, you know, you know, church, let me tell you. I, I, I mean, I'm saying this on there, but it's so true. In the personally, it is hard sometimes when you have to pay taxes. But I've learned something very comforting to me uh, when it comes to my taxes. The more money I have to pay in GST and business tax, it means the more you're making. So I, 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 don't, I, you know, I, I, I don't have a problem with whatever it is. Because it's not really, especially the, the, the uh, GST side, it's not really me giving it. But you have to have the control to give it up because it's not yours. But the more you give, it means the better you're doing. Right? So, God bless me, but we don't want to obey what he's saying. Church, if we don't follow God's word, we won't reach that, that uh, destination. God speak to us out of a desire to build and strengthen that relationship. How many persons in here, hey, Degan, I'll try this one, get a boyfriend or a girlfriend without talking to them? Are you all hard of hearing? Let's go to point two. <laughs> no, listen to me, church. I'm saying, listen, God speak to us because he wants a relationship with us. And we need to speak back to him. Amen? It's not going to be a one-sided thing. Ralph, don't worry about that. We'll pray for a girlfriend for you, brother. <laughs> Let me leave you alone, Ralph. <laughs> He speaks to us, church, to transform our image. God speaks to us for a specific purpose. He speaks to us so as to heal the failures, the sins, the different things within our life. He speaks to us, church, to heal damaged words that has been said to us and how we have been offended. He speaks to us to build us up what has been torn down, church, he goes to multiple ways as much as possible to communicate with us. It is whether or not we are willing to hear. This morning, I just share a few. He speaks to us through the word of God. He speaks to us through creation. He speaks to us through people. He used individuals also to confirm things to us. He speaks to us through events, circumstances. God speaks to us through tragedy and triumph. We can hear God's voice. He speaks to us as a friend. All we got to do is to listen. All right? But here's something important. He speaks to us so that we can speak to others. Amen? And so it's important that we listen. None of us in here this morning can afford to be hard of hearing. You know, you know church, there is, a, there is a silence that can happen 
up here. It's just amazing. And I know it seems like only me could hear it sometimes. And that makes me feel good and my hearing is not as bad. But none of us can afford to hear God's word and ignore it. Eventually we'll become completely deaf. So this morning I'm praying that the Lord will speak to each and every one of us in an intimate way. That he will clear whatever destruction is around us. So that when we hear his word, we go in the direction of his word. When we hear his word and he says, this is what I want for you, my child. That, be, that we will be responsive. That we will not be deaf. That we will not be hard of hearing. And that we will be able to experience God's peace, God's love, and God's joy in our heart. So this morning is my prayer that as we walk through the doors, each person will say, hmm. Am I hearing well? And then when we say that, we said, what did I hear this morning? And then when the, Lord, the word of the Lord speak to you and said, well, this is what you need to do. You will be responsive and said, Lord, I surrender to your word. If you remain, uh, if you don't listen, eventually it will get worse. And you will truly need a hearing in and the devil will not provide you with one. Thank you for watching our messages and for watching our channel. If you have not done so yet, can you subscribe and be a part of the family of Paulero Baptist Church? God bless you.